All right, welcome to Countdown to Courage. Uh, I'm Brother Pope, uh, and it's my honor to be your host today for the broadcast and for the program. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day today. We're still uh, thanking the Lord for the good time God gave us last night, and uh, many of you tuned in, and we thank the Lord and praise the Lord for that. I hope you're having a wonderful, wonderful day today. What, what a joy it is to be born again, to be saved and to know Christ as Savior, the joy of the Lord is our strength. I'm glad that we have a peace that passeth all understanding. And man, what a joy to, to be able to spend some time in the Word of God today. And I hope you have and hope you've spent some time with your Heavenly Father. He loves you very much. And uh, we're, we are so honored that you're aboard today. Uh, and we hope that the broadcast will be a real blessing uh, to all those that are tuned in. So we'll do a shout out here in just a moment and uh, give uh, folks just a few more moments to uh, to get uh, tuned in. And so to all of our Calvary folk, uh, listen, I would just mention this. We definitely have a very, very special prayer request uh, to let our church family know. Most of you know Brother Ed. And Brother Ed took a tumble off of a ladder today and he's in serious shape. They've moved him down to Carolina Medical and... Uh, you know what, Ed's standing in need of prayer today. And so I, will, I want to encourage you to put Ed on your prayer list and uh, let's, be, let's be asking God to intervene in that situation. And uh, listen, God's able, amen, God is able. And so we sure appreciate your prayers uh, on that. Well, hey, listen, we're going to give away a book here in just a moment. We've got the um, a book called, uh, Can You Hear Me Now? And... Uh, we're going to go a little further today in our subject on skills in Christian communication. And there is a chapter, a full chapter in this book that deals with the six parts of communication. And so even if you don't buy the book for marriage sake, then maybe, you know what, maybe you ought to buy it uh, just uh, if you'd like to get some of these notes and things in written form, then I encourage you to do that. It's available on Amazon. It's also at our bookstore, church bookstore, Common Grounds. And uh, anyway, but I'm not going to take this time to push a book. I just, uh, but we are going to give the book away today. And so I tell you what, we'll draw here in just a moment. And I appreciate my beautiful little wife putting together all the names. And so what we did was we took those folk who shared it day before yesterday and yesterday, and we put those names together. And we got a, a, a large group of names. And so that's a blessing. Thank you for, thank you for sharing the broadcast. And if you think this would help someone, let me encourage you to share it with them. All right, all right. Well, hey, let's do a shout out, and then we'll get right into it today. Uh, and so let me first of all say hello to Miss Nina Hill. Hello, Miss Nina. Looks like you might be one of the first ones that tuned in today. Miss Harriet Mason's watching. Hello, Harriet. Hope you're having a wonderful Thursday. My beautiful wife is watching from somewhere. I don't know where she's at, but honey, I'm glad you're watching today. Love you. And uh, Nellie Daniels is watching. Hello, Nell. Nellie, good to have you today. Uh, Melinda Pennington. Hello, Miss Melinda. Good to see you tuned in. Uh, Rocky Bird. Hello, Rocky. Thanks for sharing already, sharing the broadcast. We appreciate that very, very much. Uh, let's see. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy Daniels. Hello, Jimmy. Hope you're having a wonderful week so far. Uh, let's see. Uh, make sure I don't uh, miss anybody. Let's see. Michelle Hoots. Hello, Michelle. Hope you and Lee and the children are having a great day today. Uh, Brother Mike Hill, Brother Mike, did I say hello to you yet? I don't think so. Hello, Brother Mike. Hope you're having a great day, my friend. Uh, Terry Stillman's watching. Terry, hope you and Russell are having a wonderful week so far. Uh, let's see. Eugene, hello, Eugene. Uh, how, how are you doing today, my friend? Good to see you tuned in. Uh, Patsy Bird is watching. Hello, Patsy. Hope you and Ronnie are having a fine day today. Uh, Angie Lester is watching. Hello, Angie. Hope you and Mike are doing well. Karen Hoffman. Hello, Miss Karen. Good to see you tuned in today. I hope you are behaving yourself today. I know you are. And uh, let's see, Miss Dreama Clary. Hello, Dreama. Hope you and David are, are uh, doing good today. Amy Queen is watching. Amy, good to have you aboard today. Let's see, Donnie and Tamara Gilly, uh, good to see uh, both of you or one of you. Whoever's watching that, probably Miss Tamara. Brother Donnie may be working. And anyway, whoever it is, howdy. Good to see you all today. Let's see here. Um, Chastity Adams is aboard today. Hello, Chastity. Hope you and Steve and the kids are having a fantastic day today. Uh, Jacob Scott. Hello, Brother Jacob. 
Man, good to see Brother Jacob tuned in today. And uh, hey, buddy, I pray for you often, your dear wife and your family and your ministry down there doing a good job. And we sure are proud of you, my friend. Let's see, uh, Tanya Looney. Hello, Tanya. Hope you and Matt and Jordan are doing well today. Phyllis Hudson's watching. Hello, Phyllis. Hope you're having a wonderful Thursday. Uh, let's see, Randy Pat. Hey, Randy. Randy Padgett's watching all the way from the state of, of Florida. One of my favorite states. And, uh, man, you're going to have to let me come down there and go fishing with you one of these days. And, uh, Randy, good to have you aboard today. Uh, Miss Dreamus says they're camping, and uh, I bet Randy's fishing, and uh, I don't know what the rest of you, some of you are working, <laughs> some of you are work today, and uh, anyway, listen, it's good to have you aboard. If I missed you, I didn't mean to, but we are so glad you've tuned in today, and, and we hope this will be upbeat and be an encouragement to you. Well, hey, listen, without further ado, we're going to give away the book now. If you're one of our folk, I tell you what we'll do. We'll just give this to you in person. If you're not one of our Calvary folk, then we'll uh, we'll drop this in the mail. So you just uh, direct message us or however you want to do that, and let me know where your address is, and we will get this to you right away. And I hope you enjoy the book. All right. So without further ado, we've got a large bowl full of names here today. And we're shaking them up. And let's see here. Let me dig way down in there. All right, here we go. And so the winner of the book today is Christine Edwards. Christine, congratulations. Christine Edwards. Everybody give Miss Christine a shout out. And uh, so Christine, hey, praise the Lord. That's a blessing. So I tell you what, we'll get the book to you. And uh, that, that, that will be, that'll be great. All right. Well, hey, listen, congratulations. We're going to go ahead and go to the screens at this time. And uh, hey, listen, I hope you're getting something from this. I, you know, I, I, I really believe that this is helpful. I, <clears throat> I believe this is just helpful material. And I know it has helped me. It's encouraged me. It has challenged me to look back over these things and to restudy and, and uh, to try to make it fresh. I hardly ever, if, I'm, if I am reteaching something or re-preaching something, I hardly ever, ever just dig it out and preach it. You know what? If I'm going to re-preach it to you, I try to dig it out and pray over it and, and ponder on it and study, uh, study it, uh, about it again and make it fresh and put some new illustrations in there. And uh, such is the case with this. And so I want to talk to you about skills in Christian communication. Now, if you've been a part of the, the broadcast this week, we've talked about several things. Number one, we talked about context. Context. You know what? It's very important that you keep everything in its context. Don't take what somebody, you know, what somebody may say, you know, don't take it out of context. All right. And then you always think about this. You always give the benefit of the doubt. It could be they weren't feeling well. It could be that they were highly emotional. It could be, you know, it could be a, 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 a ton of things. And so, you know what? Do your best to keep it in its context. Then we talked about the second part of communication yesterday is the sender or what we call the encoder. And, uh, you know, it's very important as the sender that, uh, you know what, that we send out the right kind of, of a message. Now, today we're going to talk about the third part of communication. And the third part of communication is what they call message. All right, the message. And so let's talk today a little bit about the message. And so uh, the, the very first thing that I want to say is this that the objective of the, of the message needs to be clear. Why you're getting ready to say what you're saying, why you're getting ready to send the message that you're getting ready to send. So uh, what, now, now think, about it, think about it like this. What good is a message that makes no sense? What good is a message that serves no purpose? Now, I'm not going to put the uh, full reference on your screen, but I'll put the, uh, or the full verse, but I'll put the reference on the screen. And you notice there I put the message should not confuse. Now, this is exactly why I believe that in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the Apostle Paul uh, wrote to the church of Corinth and, and really gave them a, a pretty stern rebuke. The reason is, is because the church of Corinth had fell into a little bit of a rut, maybe a big rut, and they had become consumed 
with the spiritual gifts and especially those spiritual gifts that seemed more dramatic and glamorous like the gift of tongues and and those kinds of things and uh, and so here's what had happened in the church so many people were speaking in in what uh, in an unknown tongue you know what happened the message began to become confusing now I want to read the scripture for you. If you have your Bibles, you can turn over there to 1 Corinthians chapter 14 with me. And look, if you will, please, at verse number 23. The Bible says, If therefore the whole church be come together in one place, and all speak with tongues, and there come in those that are unlearned or unbelievers, will they not say that you are mad or crazy? But if all prophesy, and there come in one that believeth not or, or one unlearned, he is convinced of all, he is judged of all, and thus are the secrets of his heart made manifest, and so falling down on his face, he will worship God and report that God is in you of a truth. In other words, Paul said this, you know what, if you're just going to come in here and you're going you're gonna to broadcast a message that's not helpful, it's not instructive, it's not beneficial to the church that's coming in, Paul said, what good is it? That's what he's saying. What good is it? And, uh, and so, you know what Paul said? The message that you're going to send in the church here needs to be a message that's going to encourage and challenge, convict, and help. And so, you know what? A message that is confusing, a message that makes no sense is, uh, you know what, is really not worth anything at all. Now, let's talk about the message today. Your message, my message, the message that we send. And so every single day, man, oh man, this is so important. Every single day we send a message out, don't we? And so let's talk about that message just a little bit today. How about this? Number one, or the first letter A is this, your message should be supportive. Your message should be supportive. Uh, now look at Ephesians chapter four and verse number 29. The Bible says, let no corrupt communication Proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. Now, what's the word edifying mean? It means to build up, to build up, supportive, to build up. But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Now, I know that some people, you know, they hear me teach this stuff and they say, well, preacher, that's just all pie in the sky. And uh, you know what? You just can't always be positive with your message. And I understand that there are times when we have to, uh, when we have to tell the truth, like we did last night on the broadcast, many of the things that we brought out about the tribulation period are in fact negative things. But we even even with that, we tried to do we tried to reveal those negative things in a positive way. Uh, and so it is important though that when you and I send our message out to our spouse, to our kids, to our husband, to our wife, to uh, to another brother, or sister in Christ, to a coworker. Uh, you know what? It's very, very important that we make sure that corrupt communication does not proceed out of our mouth, but the message ought to be supportive. It ought to be a message that builds people up and encourages them to serve the Lord. So number one, your message should be supportive. How about this? Number next is this. Your message should be seasoned. Now, I love this one. Your message should be seasoned. Look at Colossians chapter four in your Bibles and look at verse number six. I love this verse. I love it, love it, love it. Colossians chapter four and verse number six. The Bible says, let your speech be always with grace. Notice this, seasoned with salt that you may know how you ought to answer every man. Seasoned with salt. Now think about it. Just like you, you ladies know what I'm talking about and a few of you fellas. You know what? When you're preparing a meal, you've got the frying pan out or you've got the pots and pans out and you're preparing a meal for your family, or for your spouse. You know what you do often? You, you, you know, hardly ever do you just throw something in a pot and heat it up and then serve it. That hardly ever happens. If it does happen, you're not a very good you're not a very good cook. You're not a very good chef. No, you know what you do. You want it to be appealing to your family, and so you put it in the pan, you put it in the pot, and then you take some time and you season it. You put some of this seasoning in there. You put some of this seasoning in there. You take the time to find the different seasonings. 
you take the time sometimes to measure it out just right uh, so it's not too salty, it's not too hot, it's not too bland, and you take the time to season that, uh, that dish that you're preparing for your family. By the way, let me tell you what happens. A lot of times when that dish makes it to the table and you say your blessing and you're getting ready to eat, what do you do? A lot of times, some, some of you other folk, you know what you do then? You season it again. Some of you get the salt shaker, you put a little salt on it. Some of you like pepper, you put a little pepper on it. Some of you do a lot of salt and some of you do a lot of pepper. And now wait a minute now, here's the point. But you take the time before you dig in and you season that food to make it better, uh, to make it more palatable, to make it delicious. You know what Paul is saying here to this church in Colossae? He's saying this, listen, before you just spout something out, before you just dish something out, you know what Paul is saying? Take some time to season it. Take some time to ponder what you're about to say. Take some time to understand that your message is powerful. Take some time to pray. Take some time to think, okay, if I say this, is it really going to help? Is it really going to encourage my wife? Is it really going to encourage my husband? Is it really going to build my children up? Is it really going to make my parents feel better or worse? And take some time to season the message that you are getting ready to send out. Man, isn't this great today? Hallelujah. This is good stuff. This is helping me today. And so, hey, your, see, your, your message should be supportive. Your message should be seasoned. But man, I love this, this last point. How about this? Your message should be sandwiched. Your message should be sandwiched. That sounds good around lunchtime, doesn't it? Your message should be sandwiched. Now, by the way, there's nothing better than a good old sandwich, man. You know what? Sometimes my wife, she'll uh, we, we'll be in a rush or there'll be a lot going on and she'll just make a sandwich for supper or, or lunch or whatever the case may be. And, uh, and oftentimes she'll apologize for that. Man, she don't have to apologize to me. It's one of my favorite meals. I love a good sandwich. And if you fix a sandwich right, how many know this? It's good. It's good. Now think about it. Your message should be sandwiched. Now think about a sandwich. How's a sandwich usually made? Usually a sandwich has bread and then a sandwich has meat. And then we cap it off with what? Another piece of bread. And you know what? That's exactly how our communication ought to be. Our message should be sandwiched. And by that, I mean this. You know what? As you're beginning to send your message, make sure that it is bread, meat, bread. And by that, I mean this. You know what? As you begin your message, first of all, use some praise. You know what? Think of something you can say to your husband that's going to encourage him. Think of something that you could say to your wife, your kids, that are going to encourage them. They're going to edify them. Use some praise, first of all. Then, you know what? Then, after you have applied that, that bread, that praise, then you can apply some meat, all right? You may have to rebuke. You may have to correct. You may have to instruct, all right? And so then after you've done that, you know what you do? You apply another piece of bread. That's more praise. That's more thanks, more gratitude, and so, man, let me tell you, listen, let me tell you how much I appreciate you. And, uh, and oh, by the way, this is something I just need to say to you. And then as you finish, by the way, I just want to tell you, I love you, man. Appreciate you so much. You're a blessing to us. You see what I'm saying? Now, you, you notice I use Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, because Christ uh, gives us the classic example. This is not the only place, but Christ gives us a classic example of your message ought to be sandwiched. Now, I want you to look at Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 1 and listen to the words of the Lord here. Revelation 2 verse 1, and the Lord says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Now, now listen closely. Verse 2, he said, I know thy works. He's talking to the church of Ephesus. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and how thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars. In other words, he said, uh, church, Ephesus, let me, let me brag on you for a little bit. You know what? You've got some great points. And so Lord, Lord takes a little time and he just brags on the church. 
Verse number three, he says, and has borne and has patience. And for my name's sake, has labored and has not fainted. Man, he's just putting on thick here. The Lord says, you know what, Ephesus? Man, there's, you, you know what, you got some great attributes. And uh, there's so many things I'm proud of you about. And he said, boy, you've done this right. And you've done that right. And you've been a blessing here. And you've stood faithful here. And then we come to verse number four. And the Lord says to the church of Ephesus, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Because thou hast left thy first love, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come to thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place except thou repent. You see there? So God applies the meat. The Lord applies the meat. He rebukes him a little bit about some things and he says, listen, you need to get this right. But watch now, watch close because this is so good. Look at verse number six. And then he says, but this thou hast that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Man, how wonderful. So you know what the Lord did? The Lord came to the church of Ephesus and he said, man, I love, 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 love this about you. And he said, I'm so proud of, uh, you know, of, of these things and you've really done well in this area. And then the Lord said, but I've got a little something Nevertheless, he said, I need, to, I need to address this issue. He did that. He rebuked them, asked them to repent. And then he turned right around and he applied that piece of bread. And you know what? He praised them once again. Now, uh, again, our message should be supportive. Our message should be seasoned. And our message should be sandwiched. Wow, 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 wow. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Man, that helps me today. I mean, that really helps me. And I hope that helps you today. Now, here's the great thing about what we've given you today. It works. It works. It's biblical. It's scriptural. It's Christ-like. It works. But here's the thing. We have to put it into, we have to put it into practice, all right? And so I hope that you will do that. Uh, as you send out your message today, oh, listen, let's make sure that we send out the right message. Well, hey, listen, Calvary, we love you in the Lord. Uh, Christine Edwards, congratulations on winning the book today. And then all of you who are tuned in today, regardless of whether who you are, wherever you may be, we are honored you tuned in today. Listen, don't forget, be kind to everyone because everyone's having a tough time. We love you. Have a great day. God bless you and take care.